All these football players are distinguished Africans. They belong to a group set up by Nelson Mandela. It's called the Elders. They say they want to use their experience and influence to try to change the world. But what about their own continent? Do they have a game plan for Africa? What lies ahead for Africa after the World Cup? Well, now on BBC World News, as the tournament comes to an end, Desmond Tutu, Gracia Michelle, Kofi Annan and Lakdar Brahimi kick around ideas and a football with Lise Doucette. The party is almost over, but the buzz will resonate for a long time to come. This has been Africa's moment. Its footballing dreams may have been short-lived, but as they say, football is more than just a game. 53 nations seem to pull together. Everyone got into the game. Come on, come on, Prata. At the start of the World Cup, I met some eminent fans. <laughs> South African Desmond Tutu puts on his trainers. Purple, of course, for an archbishop. Ghanaian Kofi Annan, who once ran the UN, has the run of the field. But Grosse Michel, an international campaigner, isn't a bad footballer. And veteran UN envoy Lakhdar Brahimi of Algeria may prefer more cerebral pursuits. But he's a good sport. All these football players are distinguished Africans. They belong to a group set up by Nelson Mandela. It's called the Elders. They say they want to use their experience and influence to try to change the world. But what about their own continent? Do they have a game plan for Africa? Thank you to all of you and welcome. Thank you for talking to us on the BBC for the first time in this way. At a very important moment, the eyes of the world are on South Africa and the continent. Archbishop Desmond Tutu, what does the World Cup mean for Africa? We've seen what uh, sports can do. Uh, in, in our own country, uh, a, a victory on the sports field did wonders uh, for our morale and for helping a disparate group of people <coughs> come together. Uh, for Africa, not just for South Africa, to, to be able to host the most spectacular sporting event is a huge feather in our cap uh, and it lifts our spirits. But it's not just a feel-good feeling, that's it? No, no. I mean, you know, we have had uh, uh, improvements to the infrastructure, I mean, the roads. Those are going to be there still after the, the, the World Cup. Uh, we, we have state of the world, I mean, sort of state of the art um, stadium, uh, and those will be there. And, you know, even if people say, you know, maybe you could have used this money uh, for building houses. You say, yes, but you know, human beings don't live on bread alone. You, you, need, you need things that inspire you, that say to you, you can do it. Kofi Annan, football can really bring change to Africa? Sometimes uh, one wonderful day in our lives is much better than years of misery. We remember that day. We remember how wonderful and how exciting it was. And it also gives us hope that it is possible to live that kind of experience. It is possible to build on it. Ross and Michelle, is it only the men who are soccer mad? Sports brings people together. And at this time, it's like all of us, regardless of uh, rich and poor, black and white, whether you are in South Africa, where you're in North Africa, wherever you are, all of us, we take pride and we feel we are one. Dr. Brahimi, is that really the message from a very diverse continent, of course? Uh, in our case, uh, you see, our continent is a continent who, uh, let's face it, has been in the news these last few years mainly for the wrong reasons. We have been in the news because of the problems that are in, in our continent. So I think all Africans are extremely happy to see that 
you know, we are going to be in the news for something good. But when the, the former African leader, Thabo Mbeki, was, was campaigning for these games, he said, I want to have, to see, it will create ripples of confidence from Cape Town to Cairo. Many yeah. are now saying it's mainly for South Africa. When we won the bid from year dot, I mean, from that moment on, uh, we said this is not just for South Africa. Yeah. This is the <clears throat> World Cup for Africa. Uh, and, and that has always been uh, the refrain. But Archbishop Tutu, Kofi Annan mentions, you know, the one magical day. Remember back in 1995 when Nelson Mandela put on the Springbok jersey, which was the rugby team that was a symbol of Africana nationalism. But the apartheid, the, the divisions of apartheid didn't go away with that one gesture. That victory did more for our country in terms of bringing us together uh, than my sermons for, for a whole year. Uh, I, I tell you, I mean, and, and that gesture by Nelson Mandela uh, of having put on uh, the jersey with the Springbok captain's number on it. That, I, I mean, that place was packed mainly with Africaners who used to say, this is a terrorist. When he stepped on the turf, they were shouting their heads off, Nelson, Nelson. But then why is it in 2010, for this World Cup, they're still asking the question, can football bring about racial harmony. That game, uh, in, uh, that rugby game, did not solve all of South Africa's problems. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you expected that, I think you were perhaps expecting a little bit too much. But it contributed a great deal to, to making this country one country. Yes, rugby is still mainly a white man's game in South Africa. But it is seen now by the blacks as their, their team. That white team is seen as their team. And the black team that play football is seen by a lot of whites as their team. It hasn't solved all the problems. This, football, this, this uh, World Cup is not going to solve all our problems in Africa. As a matter of fact, it probably will solve none of our problems. But I think it's going, you know, as Kofi said, it's going to give us one nice day. One nice month, actually. Uh, in, actually, in our I lives. think it is going to be much more than one day or one month. I think what this World Cup will help us as Africans is that sense of strengthening our oneness, our self-esteem. I think that's extremely important. You may not understand this. This is a continent which was oppressed for hundreds, if not uh, thousands of years, okay? Our own self-perception was uh, very se severely, I mean, hurt. We need this kind of things which tell us how great we, we are <laughs> and how good we can be and how much we can achieve. And, but but is, is football so magical? And we do know about the magic of sport. But in a, take just South Africa, where the gap between the rich and the poor is said to be one of the biggest in the world. I think you are concentrating on, on a very, <laughs> very wrong direction. And but even it if you. To no, 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 no. Let, let, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it is true. It does. But you don't also ask how much we have, we have gone, what we have achieved. You still, you only concentrate on what we still have to do. But it, don't forget, this is a country which 15 years back, yeah. 15 only. And one of the let me say unfair things which people do around South Africa is that they forget that we only have one decade a little bit more of yes. democracy. Yes. Yes. yes, we have changed completely, although we still have uh, these very, very high, I mean, levels of, of poverty. This year, 17 African nations are going to mark 50 years of independence. Oh, I, I think we've, we've achieved a lot, but we have a long way to go. And leadership and governance will make a real difference. What is it that even Africans call it an African disease? How many presidents for life there are in Africa now? 
No, I, I think the, those uh, uh, situations are changing and will change. First of all, the civil society in Africa is becoming very active and robust and putting pressure on the political elite and trying to hold them uh, to account. Uh, we have had many more elections on the continent. Yes, some have had problems associated with it. But as you look around the continent and the generational change is taking place, you're going to see fewer and fewer presidents who are going to be able to stick around for 30, 40 year, years. They are not kings. They should not be able to hold on to power uh, for that long. But, but how do dynamic young men and women get access to those institutions where they can become future leaders? You know, I, I belong to the generation you are talking about that fought for independence and won independence. And when I see, you know, our collective performance over the last few years, uh, I think I am very, very critical, self-critical. Uh, we haven't done as well as we, 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 should, uh, we should have. Uh, but as Grassa said, I think when, when, when you ha you, if you want to make a balance sheet, look at the whole picture. And if you are going to compare the situations that exist now with what existed before, I think you will see that even in the worst of our countries, uh, the, 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 the child mortality is much better than before. The, not our, all our kids are in school, but much, much more kids are in school than they were before, and, and so on. Having said that, you are, you are absolutely right that our young people are starved of success. You see, the, you, know, you and I who were around, uh, you know, all of us who were around in, in those dark days, we we can say, okay, you know, we haven't done very well, but it's not too bad. We've made some progress. But the young man who yeah. was born mm -hmm. 20 years ago, he mm -hmm. doesn't know about yeah. that. And he, he said, you know, I don't care about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. M my life is, is, is no bloody good. Uh, I think Kofi is right to say we, we are impatient for change and that we want things to move quicker because we have the conditions. And I'm, I'm convinced this continent will move much quicker quicker but in how? certain but how look even if they say democracy is the answer election the recent elections ethiopia sudan questions were raised not just by international monitors but by the people in those countries themselves listen this is a continent of 53 countries <laughs> All these football players are distinguished Africans. They belong to a group set up by Nelson Mandela. It's called the Elders. They say they want to use their experience and influence to try to change the world. But what about their own continent? Do they have a game plan for Africa? What lies ahead for Africa after the World Cup? Who puts on his trainers? Purple, of course, for an archbishop. <laughs> Ghanaian Kofi Annan, who once ran the UN, has the run of the field. Agrasa Michel, an international campaigner, isn't a bad footballer. And veteran UN envoy Lakhtar Brahimi of Algeria may prefer more cerebral pursuits, but he's a good sport. All these football players are distinguished Africans. They belong to a group set up by Nelson Mandela. It's called the Elders. They say they want to use their experience and influence to try to change the world. But what about their own continent? Do they have a game plan for Africa? Well, now on BBC World News, as the tournament comes to an end, Desmond Tutu, Gracia Michelle, Kofi Annan and Lakda Brahimi kick around ideas and a football with Lise Doucette. The party is almost over, but the buzz will resonate for a long time to come. This has been Africa's moment. Its footballing dreams may have been short-lived, but as they say, football is more than just a game. 53 nations seem to pull together. Everyone got into the game. Come on, come on, Greta. At the start of the World Cup, I met some eminent fans. <laughs> South African Desmond 